Hello everyone and welcome to your video on measuring shapes. So here I have drawn a little rectangle for us and there are three different measures that we often take of shapes like this. One is we might measure the perimeter and the perimeter is like we uh, it's like measuring the fence around the rectangle. So um, it would be if you measured this, then this, then this, then this. So it's around the rectangle. The area is the space inside the rectangle. So what we would do is we would take our rectangle and we would divide it up into even little squares here and then we would count to see how many of those squares we had. That is what we're doing when we calculate the area of something. Finally, we could calculate the volume of the space, which is how much it would hold if it were a box. So if I were to turn this into a box, then I would have this uh, slice of squares that are even, and then I would have another slice of squares and another slice of squares going all the way back until I had filled up the entire box. That is what we mean when we talk about volume. So, when we are calculating these things, let's say we have this um, rectangle, and we know that this is our width, and we know that this is our length, and we're going to calculate our perimeter, which is abbreviated P. What would our P equal? Well, it's going to equal W, however long this is, plus L, plus another W, because this is going to be the same as that, plus L, because this is going to be the same as that. Okay, now you can rewrite this um, in different ways depending on, I don't know, what floats your boat at the moment. So we could rewrite this as P equals 2W plus 2L, or we could rewrite it as 2 times W plus L. Those all mean the same things. We've just manipulated the formula um, using um, algebra. So those are all the same. I don't care which one you use, whichever one comes easiest to you or seems more appropriate at the moment. Here's what I want you to remember though, is that the answer that you get is in plain old feet or inches or miles and so forth, right? So we're going to get, if we're measuring this in feet, we're going to say 3 feet plus 5 feet plus 3 feet plus 5 feet equals 16 feet and it's just plain old feet. Okay, it's a little bit different when we start working with area. So here's our same rectangle, um, and we have our width and we have our length, but the formula is a little different, of course, because now we're calculating all the space inside the rectangle. And the formula here is that we take length times width. Length times width. Here's what's interesting, though, is that the answer you get is in square units square units because we're making a bunch of squares in order to make this measurement, right? So our answer is going to be in square inches or square feet or square miles. Notice that um, sometimes we write out like square yards, but if we were going to abbreviate that, we would say yard squared, like that. Um, that all means the same thing. So um, uh, the reason that we do this is because since we are multiplying these two things together, we are multiplying feet times feet, you know, the width 
times the length, which is another set of feet, which gives us feet squared. So that's why we have to say it in square feet. Okay, now it gets even a little more challenging when it comes to volume. So volume, we have our rectangle again. Okay, and uh, usually we kind of label things a little bit differently. We usually say that for volume, it's length times width times height. Length times width times height. So this would be our length, this would be our width, and this would be our height. Now I made it sound like that that was an actual rule, but it's not. You can call this length and this uh, width and this height if you want. It doesn't matter because all you're going to do is you're going to multiply those three numbers together. But you're going to get the dimensions going in different ways and you're going to multiply them. So now what do you think your answer is going to come out to be? Well, your answer is going to be in units cubed. So we have feet times feet times feet, so that gives us cubic feet. So answer is going to be in units cubed, so you're going to get things like inches cubed or feet cubed, right? Um, always that's the case because you're multiplying these three different terms together. So here we multiply none, right? We're only adding. Here we multiply none, so we don't have any exponents. Here, we're multiplying two things, so all of our exponents are to the two. And here, we're multiplying three things, so all of our exponents are three. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Before I let you go, though, I want to talk to you about what formulas you have to know. Because students are always like, do I have to memorize this? Do I have to know this for the test? Do I? Okay, so let's just clear all of this up. Yes, there are some formulas that you need to know. Let's say that you have a triangle. You need to know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. You just need to know that. That just needs to be part of who you are as a person. And so this would be your base and your height is a measure from the tippy top down to the base. Remember, it has to be a perpendicular line. If you have a funky um, triangle that looks like this, this is your base, and then you measure a perpendicular from the height, and that becomes your height. So you pretend like that is. You have to figure that out. Okay? So this is the area of a triangle. Yes, you have to know it. Okay. So now for a lot of the other um, shapes, like rectangles and squares and parallelograms, right? All of these things, it is base times height, okay? That's your formula, is base times height. Sometimes I think of it as length times width because that's the way I learned it when I was in grammar school and that is seared into me. But base times height is gonna get you um, where you need to be for all of these types of shapes. Now, we do have another odd type of shape, and that is the trapezoid. And remember, with the trapezoid, that means that we have top and bottom are parallel to each other. The other sides may or may not be congruent, but are definitely not parallel. So the formula for the area of a trapezoid is one-half A plus B times H. That's A, this is B, and then we measure H, okay? So yes, you have to know that. You have to memorize that. This needs to be a part of who you are. Um, there is another thing that they teach you in this chapter, which I'm just gonna add on here right now. And that is for all shapes, all shapes, you can also say that the area equals the mid-segment times the height. So remember, a mid-segment is halfway here and halfway here. This becomes the mid-segment. And if I take the mid-segment times the height, I also get area. 
Now, it works nicely with triangles, um, but it works even with regular shapes like this. Mid-segment times height, right? Mid-segment times height. Which is really the same thing as length times height, right? I mean, it's, it's the exact same thing. But you could think of it this way. And it even works with trapezoids. If you have a mid-segment and a mid-segment, I can take this mid-segment times my height, and I am rocking and rolling there in business. Okay, this you don't get to use as often because they don't often give you the mid-segment information, but if they did, that's what you would do with it. All right, that is the end of this video. I'm going to stop here. Um, let's go do a few problems and then see what kind of questions you guys have.